You're watching Strat News Global, and I'm Amitabh Bravi. Joining us from Canberra is Charlie Leon Jones. He's a researcher at the Australian Strategic Policy Institute's Defence and Strategy Program. Charlie, thanks so much uh, for your time. No, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to speak with you. Just wanted to get your assessment of what uh, the Taiwanese president uh, has announced in terms of uh, indigenous submarine building. Now that uh, will probably be handed over for trials and the subsequent usage to the Navy only by 2025. But how significant do you see that development considering the geopolitical situation? Well, commencing the construction of uh, any indigenously developed submarine fleet is a big ask for any country. It's particularly um, uh, it's a particularly big ask for Taiwan, which has been uh, quite limited in the um, sorts of uh, foreign military uh, technologies it can procure from partners around the world. And so, what um, the construction of um, eight new submarines for the Taiwanese Navy symbolizes is. Um, the Taiwanese government's resolve to um, develop its defence industrial base and thereby increase the resilience of um, uh, the Taiwanese military. Um, uh, now, that does not mean to say that uh, the development of Taiwan's indigenous submarines will be without problems. Um, Australia, for its uh, part, has experienced a, a number of issues in its procurement of uh, uh, first the Collins class submarines and now uh, the attack class submarines. So I think um, that the Taiwanese government and the Navy is probably going to encounter some teething issues as um, construction uh, commences. Um, but uh, what one would hope that uh, Taiwan has the, uh, the engineering and uh, construction expertise needed to overcome those challenges and develop a, um, and deliver a, a potent uh, submarine uh, capability for the Taiwanese Navy. Potent, you're talking about, and it's a potent uh, message, even though it's uh, five years down the line, if everything goes according to a time schedules, they're replacing what? Eight submarines they have, four, I think, are World War II vintage, four maybe from the 80s. Some of this will be with uh, American collaboration as well. Mm. But in five years, uh, we're already seeing how well China has developed militarily and otherwise mm. in five years. So will China develop uh, further? How do you see that panning out? Well, I think uh, Taiwan um, can respond to the outgrowth of uh, China's military capability in the Taiwan Strait by um, quickly developing a force that is more um, that, that is cheaper and uh, more dispersible and more disposable. So um, uh, uh, procuring um, smart mines or, or uh, uh, anti -ship, uh, ground based anti ship cruise missiles, um, along with the um, uh, procurement of the Dojiang class of guided missile corvettes with mine laying rails attached to the stern. Um, will deliver a capability for the Taiwanese military that could bolster deterrence in the Taiwan Strait and ensure that the PLA uh, thinks twice before um, making uh, further incursions into Taiwanese sovereignty. So there's a lot that can be done in the short to medium term um, uh, for Taiwan to um, improve its own security outlook, um, but uh, some hard choices will need to be made um, by uh, the Taiwanese Ministry of National Defense on force structure. And I think um, the signs there are looking promising. When you're talking about uh, choices now, of course, uh, you've seen in the recent weeks and months how the outgoing Trump administration has uh, moved the process of supplying Taiwan with arms tremendously, whether it's, you know, missiles or uh, armament that has been provided. How do you see the incoming Biden government uh, working with Taiwan? Well, I think that um, over the course of um, Trump's tenure, a, a bipartisan consensus has emerged on the Hill in Washington uh, about the importance of um, uh, competing with China. And a key element of that uh, uh, strategy of uh, um, competition will be to strengthen um, America's um, well, de facto alliance with 
with Taiwan. So I expect the, the Biden administration to continue upholding the, the, the precedent um, set by the Trump administration um, uh, with regard to uh, uh, arms sales. Um, and it, to be honest, it would be uh, good to see uh, the Biden administration uh, perhaps uh, guide uh, the, uh, the, the Taiwanese military and um, uh, defence uh, apparatus into uh, developing a more resilient force. So uh, perhaps uh, uh, marketing some of the capabilities I mentioned before, like smart mines or um, uh, uh, anti-ship missiles. Uh, that would be really helpful, um, both for strengthening uh, the US-Taiwan relationship, but um, for also for bolstering uh, deterrence in the Taiwan Strait in a manner that's favorable to the government in Taipei. You're talking about bipartisan U.S. support, and it's interesting that one of uh, the figures who has been tapped or tipped to be the next uh, de uh, defense secretary in the U.S., uh, Michelle Florney, and her recent statements has been uh, put out a lot in terms of looking at how the Biden administration will uh, will behave with the CCP, with the PLA. Uh, just looking at that statement uh, where she talks about uh, you know, the ability to sink all Chinese military vessels, submarines, and merchant ships in the South China Sea within 72 hours. Uh, but do you see that bipartisan support uh, in the US converting into the strong posture that uh, Trump has instinctively followed vis-a-vis mm. uh, -vis China? Well, I would certainly hope so, but um, I am in some ways a, a little bit skeptical. Um, the Biden uh, transition team, uh, uh, failed to uphold um, the precedent set by the Trump administration in uh, arranging for uh, Joe Biden to accept uh, President Tsai Ing-wen's congratulations via, via a phone call. Yeah. Um, uh, instead, uh, the Biden administration, through um, uh, formal um, uh, uh, channels, arranged for um, uh, Taiwan's uh, envoy in Washington, uh, 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 Xiao Mei Li, uh, to uh, 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 speak with uh, Antony Blinken, who's just been nominated um, uh, Biden's Secretary of State. So what happened there was uh, the, the Biden administration effectively downgraded US-Taiwan US ties from uh, the presidential level to the senior official level. Uh, that's um, uh, disappointing in one sense, but in another sense, it shows a, a an, an interesting um, development for um, uh, you, uh, America's relationship with China uh, 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 in the sense that um, uh, before Trump, uh, <laughs> there wouldn't have been much contact uh, between uh, uh, an incoming uh, presidential uh, administration um, in Washington and um, a, a sitting president in Taiwan. So look, one can't be too pessimistic about uh, about that, the fact that um, uh, someone as senior as a secretary, uh, a yeah. secretary of state nominee, spoke with um, uh, a member of the Taiwanese government, I think, is uh, at least heartening. And one shouldn't be too pessimistic of looking back, say, in terms of Australian foreign policy as well, because uh, when you look at uh, how it's developed over the years from what has been called China appeasement under the previous government to now the developing of the Quad itself. And we've seen how China, the PLA, the CCP has reacted. Uh, your uh, diplomats in uh, Canberra again issuing those 14-point uh, guidelines, which uh, the Prime Minister has said, uh, you know, I mean, Australia will be Australia and will follow the rule of law. Mm. Well, I, I, of course, um, it's now completely untenable for um, the Australian government to compromise on any of those uh, 14 points. Um, uh, I, I forgot which uh, senior Australian official said this, but uh, we also have to save phase two in this country, you know. Um, uh, the the um, uh, Unfortunately, um, uh, uh, Chinese diplomacy under Xi Jinping is less about securing outcomes or consensus and more about um, showmanship. And I think that uh, the 
uh, issuance of uh, 14 demands to um, the Australian government is really an example of that uh, sort of showmanship. It doesn't achieve much. It, it decreases uh, Australia's room for, for compromise and um, it basically uh, uh, puts Australia's relationship with China in uh, the same place where it started from. You know, the, uh, if um, the Chinese government were, was actually looking for a circuit breaker, that's exactly how you don't do it. Hmm. And uh, that's been proven uh, on the ground in terms of uh, Prime Minister Scott Morrison and uh, the new Japanese uh, Prime Minister Yoshida Suga meeting. There's a defense pact that was assigned as well. So China, as you're pointing out, is doing exactly the opposite or the effect of what China is doing is uh, getting just the opposite effect. Well, absolutely. The more um, uh, showmanship uh, that um, uh, the Chinese government engages in, um, uh, the, the more uh, uh, perhaps frightened and uh, wary uh, other governments might be. And, and, and what that uh, uh, will result in is uh, countries like Australia collaborating with its democratic partners, such as Japan, such as India, in order to um, uh, uh, bolster our own resilience vis-a-vis uh, -vis, um, Communist Party coercion. So I think um, uh, that the Chinese government might have a strategy um, uh, to uh, ensure that, that uh, uh, the Indo-Pacific becomes a, a more Sino-centric um, region, but uh, that strategy isn't being implemented especially well because the results that um, uh, ha have been borne out over the last few years um, uh, point to an Indo-Pacific that is more multipolar and less Sino-centric. Uh, your comments again on uh, the reports uh, that came out uh, about uh, the PLA Navy testing what have been called aircraft carrier um, killers in terms of their missiles. Now, is that again just messaging because we saw a lot of movement of the US carrier groups through the Taiwan Straits? Uh, how potent is that in terms of a threat to any kind of collaborative effort against uh, what uh, the PLA is doing in terms of its aggressive behavior? It would be extremely naive to say that um, the, to, to, to dismiss the anti-ship um, cruise and ballistic missile threat uh, posed by the PLA to um, uh, the United States and uh, other allied navies. Um, the outgrowth of um, China's anti-ship capabilities is an extremely serious issue. Um, uh, with which the United States and its partners and allies will have to deal uh, in the years ahead. The US Navy has been thinking about uh, this issue quite, quite seriously. It's developed a new doctrine of distributed maritime operations. And one of the more interesting examples to come out of um, that uh, operational concept um, is the idea of um, using a, a autonomous surface vessels as uh, pickets for aircraft carrier battle groups. And uh, uh, ju just as the United States Navy uh, responded to the threat in, um, uh, the, uh, in World War II by deploying smaller surface vessels in order to secure safe passage of um, an aircraft carrier, I think that the US Navy will uh, find ways of uh, ensuring the resilience of its own carrier battle groups by using um, uh, autonomous surface vessels. And so I think um, uh, the, uh, if uh, Michelle uh, Flournoy uh, actually does become Secretary of Defence, that is something that uh, she would be likely to uh, uh, consider um, uh, quite thoroughly. And overall, when we're looking ahead at the importance of the US and the change in administration, I like the last line in one of your pieces where you turned around uh, President like Biden's tweet to saying that you argue America can't just lead by the power of its example. It also needs to lead by the example of its power. I mean, that itself sums up uh, what everyone is hoping. Well, absolutely. Um, uh, say what you will about the, the Trump administration, and I certainly have uh, my my criticisms of it. Mm -hmm. um, 
uh, Donald Trump uh, was uh, more willing to use um, uh, some elements of national power that Obama didn't use, um, whereas Obama failed to enforce um, uh, the red line over Syria um, when Bashar al-Assad used chemical weapons against his people. Uh, Donald Trump bombed Syria when Bashar al-Assad used uh, chemical weapons against his own people. While he was meeting Xi Jinping. While he was meeting Xi Jinping, as um, uh, Bilahari Korsaka, the former permanent secretary of the Singaporean Foreign Ministry, um, uh, uh, pointed out in a really interesting article for uh, the Nikkei Asian Review. So I think uh, that Biden will have to um, increase uh, his appetite for risk um, in uh, his in his dealings uh, with Xi Jinping, he'll have to be more willing to enforce uh, US uh, red lines in the Indo-Pacific. And um, he will have to focus on uh, uh, rebuilding and uh, strengthening uh, the United States Navy, which has been uh, under strain for, for, for quite some time due to um, uh, continuous deployments in the Middle East and elsewhere. Charlie Jones, thank you so much for your analysis and your time. No, my pleasure. Have a lovely day. And just for our viewers, if you do like our kind of journalism, you can get onto our website and support our endeavor. Do follow our social media handles on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram as well. You've been watching Strat News Global. I'm Amitabh Brady.